Welcome to the number one source for information, news, and opinion on your Columbus Blue Jackets. This is CBJ in 30, presented by Telhio Credit Union. You can also find the audio version on the CBJ Radio SoundCloud page, Apple Podcasts, TuneIn, Spotify, Google Play Music, or wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. Now here's your host, Bob McGilligan. Welcome to another Monday mailbag edition of CBJ and 30 presented by Telhio Credit Union. Yes, I'm back in the CBJ and 30 mailroom, ready to answer your questions today. You know, what I was thinking earlier was I was thinking back to the Wizard of Oz and Dorothy's line in the Wizard of Oz. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. Dorothy didn't spend a week in Florida. That's all I know, because that's that's not true. Look, I, I like to be home. It's nice to be home in some ways. But when you start the day at one temperature and you wind up at another one, and it's not even freezing cold here right now, but for goodness sakes, I know. I know I'm rubbing it in. You didn't get to go to Florida. You didn't get to do all that stuff. I know. I get it. I understand. But I'm just making a point. Hey, and something had to be good because the games, they left uh, – a lot to be desired. Uh, not all of them. I mean, there were, there were good games. Uh, there were, I, I think three of the four games played in Florida were good games. I think the only one that wasn't really a good game was the five to one drubbing. Was that the final in, uh, in Florida? I think it was, I don't, I don't even, you know, it's, it's to the point where they're all, they all run together. <laughs> but anyway, it was a very tough road trip for the blue jackets. They went and six on the road and uh, are coming home to play tomorrow night against Detroit. I'll tell you all about uh, my opinions on what's going on with this team and answer your questions right after I tell you about Telhio Credit Union. 1934, that's when it was, when Telhio Credit Union decided they were going to put people over profits. Simple as that. They are going to make their customers the most important thing in their existence. And they have maintained that same mindset to this very day. If you're not a member of Telhio Credit Union, if you're wondering why you should become one, the answers are at their website at telhio.org. Go through there, click on the different tabs. You'll find out all of the services. You'll find out about the perks that go along with the services. You'll get the answers to all of your questions. And if you cannot find an answer, there's a live chat option on the right-hand side of the screen during business hours. Just click on that and somebody will come on and help you to find the answers that you are looking for. The question that you will have to answer for yourself is why deal with a regular bank when you can be with a credit union that will put you above everything else. Tell Ohio Credit Union. Find them on the web at tellhio.org. So let's look at this road trip as a whole. The first two games in Dallas, they stunk. They were no good. As I mentioned, in Florida, there was a game that was a one-goal game going into the third period. The Blue Jackets lose with an empty netter. Then they get shellacked. In the second game, I know John Tortorella said it was three to one and it, we were playing well and they then they lost five to one. But whatever that I didn't think that was great. So uh, that's a bad one. I chalked that up to being a bad one. Then they go into Tampa and they've got two good games. You know, quite honestly, they're in the game. Uh, they take last night's game into overtime, brief overtime. If you blinked, you missed it. It was only 10 seconds long. Whenever you've got three guys on the ice and two of them fall down and then all of them wind up being on the wrong side of the ice, you're just asking for trouble, just asking for it. Uh, Victor Hedman ended it 10 seconds into the overtime with a goal. He beats Elvis Merzlikens. Toughest part about that game for me is Jonas Corposalo was playing very well. And all of a sudden it's a three, two game Tampa's on the power play and the lightning score. And it's very obvious that Jonas Corposalo gets hurt prior to the shot that beats him. He could not go from his left to his right. Now, what is the injury? It's a lower body injury. That's I think that's pretty obvious. What is it? I don't know. I haven't been uh, briefed on it by any means. But uh, it it's not good. And it's not good for a number of reasons. We keep talking about trading one of these goalies this offseason. Well, you know, what if this is a longer term thing? What if this is, you know, at, at the very least, is it a red flag? 
to other franchises. If that was a guy that you were going to move or if that was a guy that somebody wanted, you know, whatever happened last night, is that is that going to be a problem in making your future goalie decisions? Is it going to be a problem to be able to trade and get value? Is it going to be a problem to keep as a backup and not know what the overall health is going to be? Who knows? Who knows? Again, I, I'm just – I'm probably speaking out of turn on this, but I'm just talking – off the top of my head right now, but it's, it has the potential to affect what's going on here. So it's, it's a bad thing in many different ways. It's bad because the game gets tied and then they lose the game in overtime. Uh, It's bad because Jonas is hurt. Uh, Despite his numbers, he has had some really good games and some really good stretches this year. He makes his team better. Um, So, what are the implications, the overall implications going to be? I don't know at this point in time, but uh, we're going to find out good or bad. We're going to find out. It's as simple as that. So uh, Elvis came in. I, I thought Elvis did fine. I was, I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of the overtime goal. I, I just, I felt that it was, I, I felt it was a shot that was pretty far out. I felt that it was a shot that he could see. I, I felt, and again, this is from four stories high. Don't knock me here. I, I just, I was surprised that he didn't at least get a little piece of it. Maybe it still goes in off his body, okay? But I, I was just a little bit surprised by that. But whatever. Uh, what are you going to do? It's one of those things, I guess. Uh, and it's where this team is right now. You know, John Tortorello will be the first one to say it. He says it all the time. You know, we deserve what our record is. And that is where this team is right now. They're, they're just uh, struggling to find a break. They're trying to create a break. They are trying. I, they, <laughs> ah, you know what? You almost run out of words over it, don't you? I mean, it becomes frustrating. It's almost frustrating to the point that it's numb, where you get numb just thinking about it. But uh, it is, uh, it's a tough year. We haven't had to endure this for a while. And it's a, it's not a good reminder. It is a good reminder in some ways. It's a lesson kind of a reminder, but it's not a good reminder like, Hey, let's do that again. But it's a good reminder of um, how spoiled you are when your team goes to the playoffs every year or has a chance to go to the playoffs every year. This team, did they have a chance from the beginning? We all thought they did, but it became very obvious very early on. No matter what I tried to tell you, no matter what I tried to make myself believe, no matter what you tried to make yourself believe, I think we all knew. As you look back on it and you think about it and everything that was going on, I I think we all knew. But I think we all said, nah, that can't be the case. They're too good for that. Nah, they'll get over this obstacle. No, they'll get through that. Nah, they'll, they'll be fine. Nah, they'll put together a streak. They'll be fine. No, they're not fine. And uh, that's the reality of it. So let me get to your questions. I, I'll just get into that and start answering what you have sent me either on Twitter at Bobby Mac Sports. Same is true at Instagram. And uh, of course, there are voice questions that you can send me at my email, Bobby Mac at bluejackets.com. And that is exactly where we're going to start today with Greg. Good morning, Bob. It's Greg in Cleveland. A number of years ago, I had the opportunity to interview Michael Flatley, the Lord of the Dance himself, right? One of the things he told me in that conversation was, if you truly love what you do, you're never really going to work. And I never forgot that. And in applying that to this team, I'm sure that Yarmo has his dream job, but wow, does he have a lot of work to do. And I'm sure that guy's got to be stressing some days right now, even though he always sounds like the cool, calm, collect Finn on these, uh, these phone call interviews with you. Um, but considering all the work he's put into this team and then the results that have come to fruition this season, yeah, I'm, I'm sure that uh, he's a little frustrated to say the least. So with that being said, do you feel this summer there are any key jacket skaters that could be on the move? And I know we talked recently about one of the goalies could be on the move. I agree. That seems like a high potential for that. But any skaters on this team that are key jackets, they've been around on this team for a bit, uh, who do you see that possibly happening to, if anyone at all? Well, Greg obviously sent that question before the Corpus Solo injury, as we were just talking about, that could have an effect on what's going to happen here. I, I think it does have an effect, good or bad. I don't know. 
Uh, but from the skater standpoint, let's just be honest. Let's just put it out there. I put it out there before. I'm going to do it again. If Seth Jones isn't willing to stay here, if you have that conversation with him and if he is thinking about going somewhere else or if, if for whatever reason, if you don't see his future beyond next season being here, then I, I think you have, I think you've got to trade him in the off season. And I can't even spit out those words without feeling sick, quite frankly. And I'm not saying that he's leaving. I'm not saying he wants to leave. I'm not saying any of that. I'm just saying you've got to find that out. And if there isn't an intention to stay and sign a new deal, I just don't think you can go into that, you know, Panarin situation again. Uh, Panarin didn't change his mind. And I, I think, I think players today, once they have their minds made up, that's what they're going to do. So if he were not going to stay, then that would be a huge name that you would see. I think that could move now beyond that, you know, Cam Atkinson's got, uh, you know, limited trade, limited, no trade clause, uh, Boone Jenner. I just think Boone is valuable to this organization. I, I think there's, especially now when you don't have a captain and you're looking for that leadership, you already have it in Boone Jenner. So I don't think you're going to, to mess with that at all. Uh, so I don't, there's, there's nobody that when you're talking about long-term guys, that's pretty much who we're talking about, right? Cam Boone. Um, yeah, the other ones are gone. So I don't see that necessarily not that it's out of the realm of possibility but i don't see it a guy who hasn't been here for very long patrick line could he be on the move i i'm i'm dumbfounded with that i i just cannot believe the struggles this guy has gone through and uh you know i'm not saying he's gonna stay or go but could he go sure absolutely in my opinion he could i mean What's he doing while he's here? Not a lot. I mean, he, he turns the puck over a lot. He fans on his shots. Um, he, he's not scoring at a rapid pace by any means. I, you know, do you have to look at that situation? And I, I know he's a restricted free agent. You sign him and send him somewhere else. Do you get a some kind of a center prospect or, or you know, as part of a deal? It's got to be a package. But I don't know. I don't know. So that will be interesting to uh, watch how all of that plays out as we get into the offseason here pretty quickly in just about a week from now. Can you believe that? Jeez. It's uh, not, not quite a week from now. Two, what, two weeks from now? Whatever it is. Game against Detroit down to Carolina, back home for four. Yeah. So two weeks, two weeks, um, we'll start to find out and, and not even right away. I mean, it's still going to take time to develop, but uh, we can move into that next phase of speculation. The next phase of speculation. I like that. That should be the, the next chapter in this show. Let's go back to uh, the voice, uh, the voice questions here. Hey, Bob Cameron Maynard in four stills, Kentucky. Um, I'll say this, I'm not the most knowledgeable hockey person out there, but, um, the good teams in the NHL that I watch, it seems like usually have a lot of speed, you know, players that can fly up the ice, you know, every, every line that comes in, you're just seeing players just fly up and down without hesitation. Uh, you know, they can, like I said, they're really fast. They can put the passes where they need to be to score goals, um, I think that speed gives a lot of these teams a, a bigger advantage over the teams like the Blue Jackets that just have big, powerful, gritty guys, which has always been the Tortorella style. Um, I, th I think if the Blue Jackets had speed, they would be a much better team because that would, in my opinion, give them a better chance to score goals. Because if you got fast players, then that gives you better chances of making passes that would lead to goals or would have a higher chance of leading to goals. So uh, my question is, what do you feel like um, – do you think the Blue Jackets should address speed in the offseason? I really think they should because I think that um, the problems with not scoring goals, I think that could be addressed mightily if we had some speed on this club. 
Uh, look forward to hearing your answer. Thanks, Bob. Well, first of all, Cameron, before I answer that, I, I want to ask this of you. When you're talking about the, a Tortorella type of team, big and strong and gritty, is that really what this team is? In your opinion, is that what this team is? You think Max Domi is big and strong and, and gritty? Do I think he can play gritty? Yeah. Do I think that he's been more of a skilled perimeter guy since he's arrived here? Yeah. Do you think Oliver Bjorkstrand is big and strong and gritty? No. I think he battles his tail off, and I think he can play gritty. But I don't think he's still not a – when you're talking about a Tortorella player, which I almost said I wish we could quit saying that, but we probably will not be saying that. Uh, sometime here soon but anyway um it's you know i i just think that's a stigmatism that it doesn't even exist there is no way you can tell me by your description by your classification you cannot tell me that this is a john tortorella team it's cam atkinson big and strong and gritty or is he a speed skill guy bjorkstrand basically speed skill guy domi right now speed skill guy um where else should I go with this? Uh, with, you know, even Texier is a big guy, but he's not, he's not playing like, you know, the, that description, like the, you know, the Rangers when John Tortorella took them deep in the playoffs, you know, it's, it's not built like that. Do you need speed? Yes, you need speed. Of course. Uh, this, this league is about two things right now, in my opinion. And it's important that you forgot one of the two things, Cameron. It's about speed and skill. And without the skill, the speed is meaningless. Let me give you some examples here. Eric Robinson, God love him. Great guy, good player, great speed. It's coming off a two-goal game. So, you know, ironically, this would be the one day where if I'm making the argument that he's got speed and not as much skill – you could say, well, he just scored two goals last night. What do you mean? But how many times have you seen him get a breakaway, create separation, miss the net, or shoot it right into the chest of the goalie? And I'm not knocking Eric. I do. I really like Eric. I, I, I would love to see him get better when it comes to beating the goalie one-on-one. -on -one because if he does, then he's really got something. If he does then there is a big paycheck in this guy's future. I'm telling you. I said it before, I'll say it again. Poor man's Josh Anderson. He's big. He has speed. He has skill. Now, if he actually played with a little bit more of that other stuff that you're talking about, with that Tortorella grit, I think he'd be an even better player. But right now it's speed. That's his thing, speed. Still doesn't have 10 goals with all that speed. And he's been playing all year. So you can be as fast as the wind. But if you don't have the skill factor to finish, then you're just beating everybody down the ice to miss the net. Liam Foody, he's got plenty of speed. He needs to develop more. Does he have that skill? I think it's there. Can he harness it? Can he make it work? I hope so. So they do have speed. Atkinson has speed. Bjorkstrand has speed. Again, you, you can pass it. You can make it look great. You can go 100 miles an hour and pass it back and forth. But when you get to the end, and this is the problem this team has, and it's not just this year. When you get to the end, you've got to finish it. And that part is skill. So I'm not disagreeing with your assessment of needing speed because it is a fast league. And if you want to keep up with the Joneses, not Seth, but if you want to keep up with everybody, you've got to have speed, but you've got to have skill. You've got to be able to finish. And that's where this team is lagging. They just don't have any finish. So where do you find that? How do you, you know, do you have it? Is it up and coming in your system? What's up and coming in your system? That's another good question. Where's it going from there? All right. 
Uh, where should we go now? I should do another question that was emailed to me, Bobby Mack at bluejackets.com. Hey, Bob, Joe from Cleveland. So I was listening to the game yesterday, and uh, I decided to wait until this morning to send you a message. But uh, I did notice the irony that Torts came into this situation with the Blue Jackets some years ago in the midst of an eight-game losing streak, and here we are um, in the midst of what appears to be the end of the Torts era on an eight-game losing streak. I'd love for Torts to stay, but I think both Torts and the organization probably are at a point where they both feel it's time to turn the page and respectfully both walk away and carry on with the next chapter in their lives. Um, it was a great coach. It was a great era. Uh, I know I'm projecting not being in the room, but uh, that's just what I feel. My question, and and this is why I waited the next day, do you think this team is going to win another game this year? I'd really like to know uh, know your feelings on that. Thanks, Bob. Well, Joe, I could look at the schedule and I could say there's a handful of games against Detroit, so sure, they're going to win, but they didn't win the last time they played Detroit, did they? They got beat in back-to-back games and didn't win, so there's no guarantees of that. Um, I'm going to say something that's not going to be popular. I already know it's not going to be popular, but I'm going to say it anyway. From the standpoint of wanting to get something to make this team better more quickly, reload instead of rebuild or retool or whatever you want to say. I don't, I don't even know if I could say it. Let me, all right, I'm going to change how I was going to say it. It is in their best interest not to win another game. Let's be honest. Really, where they stand today, they've got 40 points. And they're sitting 27th in the league. And right now that means, barring moving in a lottery, top five pick. The only teams that are below the Blue Jackets in the standings right now are Ottawa, and there's only two points that separate the teams. New Jersey, five points. Anaheim, five points, and lowly Buffalo, seven points. <laughs> winning, <laughs> winning now and putting together wins damages where you're going to pick. And this team has never fully embraced that. Just think back into recent history. Think about late season winning streaks when guys like Connor McDavid, Jack Eichel, and a couple years later when Austin Matthews, those types of players were on the table for the taking. And then you have these meaningless late season winning streaks and you're like, why? Why? So do I want to call wins? Of course, absolutely. Absolutely. Do I want to see them win over lose? Yes. No doubt about that. But where are you right now? What's best for you right now? I mean, Detroit is sitting with 42 points and you've got 40. You go and you beat them two times, they're, you're back ahead of them. Yay. What do you get from that? Nothing. You're not going to the playoffs anyway. You're not going. That's That's determined. That's determined. So where do you want to pick? And you're not trying to lose. No, nobody on this team is going to go out there and try to lose. That's a fact. They're going to try to win. Uh, their competitors are pros. They're going to try to win. Of course, I get it. But is it doing you any good to win right now? No. No, it's not. Because now it is about draft position to me. And I hate that. I hate it. I can't tell you how sickening that is to say but it's true. It is absolutely the truth. 
And I wouldn't tell you anything that I didn't feel was the truth. On Twitter, at Bobby Mac Sports, David sent this. Now, this is coming after the uh, – this would have been the, the game on Thursday in Tampa against the Lightning. Okay? David says, I watched Elvis's interview the other night, and I just got done watching Tort's interview prior to the game on Sunday night. My biggest question is this. How can John Tortorella not have seen the Elvis interview? This seems like something an involved coach would have seen. Disagree. I'll finish this, and then I'll elaborate. Also wanted to add that I felt every bit of Merzlikin's emotions. I feel for this crew. I believe they are trying. Why should he have to watch every interview that his players do? Why? That's not in. That's not necessary. It's not. The conversations he has with his players are what matters. doesn't matter what they say in front of the cameras. They've got to be accountable for what they say in front of the camera. So, you know, if, uh, if one teammate goes out and rips another teammate and it starts a brouhaha within the room or whatever, then he's got to find out about that without watching the interview. He doesn't need to watch the interview. You shouldn't have to watch all those interviews. And look, I feel for them too. I, they are trying. They are trying. But I, you and I might have a completely different um, opinion about that whole about that whole thing anyway, about that whole interview itself. Um, you might. You, because I, I wasn't as impressed by it as you were, okay? I just wasn't. Look, I, I know he's a wear the emotions on the sleeve kind of guy. I get it. I understand. Um, you know, but, but I, I just, <laughs> I just. It didn't sit as well with me. I, I'm not even going to get into it because it's going to get perceived the wrong way. It's going to get potentially twisted around. Um, I know I'm going to sound old school. I'll say this. I'll say this about it. I think personally, as a goalie, I lean more toward the be seen, not heard. And I know that that doesn't, that's, that's not his persona. Or anything like that, I know. Um, and I know, I know it's the hardest job on the ice. I know when everybody else makes mistakes, if you can't clean up the mistakes, you get the blame for it. I understand. Look, it's not the same level by any means. My my son played that position for what a decade. You know, I saw it, I heard it, I know he was getting blamed for stuff that wasn't his fault. It sucks. I get it. I know. And he played on some bad teams. And you just, you know, it's, I don't know. I, I just, why is it okay for a forward to say something or a defenseman to say something and not a goalie to say something? If, if that's your question to me, then that's a good question. And maybe, and that's why maybe I'm not being fair. And, and that's why I said it has the potential to be spun in a, in a way I don't mean it to be, but I just, I just think that it is such a hard position and it's such a, and, and you're splitting it, you know, neither one of these guys is playing every day. You know, the other guys are all playing every day and they're all trying every time they're out there and it, it sucks to lose. But again, it was a, uh, it, it's not something that John Tortorella should have to go and watch to get back to the original question of it. He doesn't have to see every interview that every player does. He never has. How many times in the six years have you heard him say, oh, I didn't see it. Well, I don't know. And maybe sometimes that's not true, but he, that's not, this is, these guys are pros. He shouldn't have to go watch every stinking interview. He knows how they feel. He knows who they are. He knows them better than you do, by the way. So no, he doesn't have to go and watch that. I, I just, that, that mentality of it drives me nuts. 
how can a coach not know that? How can you know that's in his job description? No, it's not in his job description. No, he doesn't need to watch every stinking interview. Doesn't need to know all of that. He has his relationship with the players. Whatever they do outside of that is what they do. How they perform is what is his job. Okay? How they perform. Not what they say after they lose. Not what they say after they win. Not how frustrated they are. Not how exuberant they are. How do they play? Are they doing their job? Are they doing it well? Do they need to get better? What can I help you with? That's the job. It's not to micromanage and watch every interview and hear everything the guy's saying. You think he doesn't know that that guy's frustrated? Of course he does. How can he not watch the interview? I don't even watch all of the interviews. What is there to say? Not much. There's not much left to say. And at this point, quite frankly, it's all talk. It's all talk. Oh, all right. Let's go to Instagram. Uh, I know I can never say this name here. Magic Imran. I, anyway, here's the question. In the event that Seth Jones cannot be or does not want to be extended, what kind of return would a package of Jones, Line A, and one of the goaltenders bring? Might it be enough to bring in an elite player who would raise the game of the other players? On a side note, while I appreciate all that Felino, Savard, and Nash did during their time here, I have to hope Toronto and Tampa Bay are first-round casualties. That would make the picks the Blue Jackets got from them mid-first-round picks instead of late first-rounders, which drastically increases their value. It's a good point. That is a good point. Um, yeah, a package like that would obviously be it would be huge. You should be able to get a huge return for a package like that. If that was something that you did and you would only do it if you had to do it. Let's be clear. If you had to do it, that's what you would do. But yes, I, I think uh, you would have the chance to get something really good with a package like that. Um, and the Toronto and Tampa thing. Yeah, I totally agree with you. I look, Here's what I think. You know, I was talking last night when I was packing up in Tampa and I said to Dave Michigan, who's a radio guy for the lightning, I said, good luck in the playoffs. And he goes, well, I, I don't, I don't know if it's going to be, I don't expect it to be as long as it was last year. I think he said, and it kind of took me by surprise. I mean, you've got arguably the best goalie in the game right now, although he looked human last night. Uh, you've got a good team that are not only are they an experienced team. Now they are a cup winning team. Yes, it's hard to win back-to-back -back cups. You know, the Penguins did it a couple of years ago, but other than that, in the salary cap era, it doesn't happen. So, okay, I get that. They're going to match up against Florida or Carolina in the first round. Uh, both of those teams are pretty good. So I get all of that, but um, I don't know. I, I guess I, I feel that uh, I – not that they're better than he thinks, but, you know, I just, I see them, you know, winning a couple of rounds anyway. Uh, Toronto, look, I've said this before. I don't know if I've said it before here. I, I can't remember. But anyway, I still think whoever comes out of the Canadian division gets beat when they come out. And I, and I think if it's, I'll go further for you. If it's Winnipeg, because of the way they're built, and I know right now they're banged up, but because of the way they're built, I think that they have the chance of getting to the Stanley cup final. If it's Toronto, I know they're very talented. I know they're fast. I know they're skilled. I don't know if they're championship worthy. I, I think they get smacked by a U.S. team when they come out into the semifinal. That's what I think. I could be wrong. I think that's the easiest division in hockey, that North division. And I think that, the other teams in the other divisions are playing tougher, more meaningful games. Right or wrong, I don't know. We'll find out when when it all sorts itself out. We've got an email here from uh, Levi. Levi says, I figured I'd give you a break from answering questions about torts in the draft and ask something that's completely unimportant. Do you know why or do you know what Patrick Line is wearing under his sweater? 
I saw a small snippet on Barstool back when he was with Winnipeg. Um, it looks like some sort of dicky, but I've been wondering what it does and why he wears it. Well, Levi, I'll tell you something. It's a good question. And somebody asked this a while ago, and I didn't get to the answer of it. So I made sure that not only did I get the answer, that I researched it to get the right answer for you. So uh, Tim Leroy is the head equipment manager for the Blue Jackets. So I simply texted Timmy and I said, hey, I've got this question. I don't fully know the answer. It looks like a neck guard to me. I said, you know, can you tell me what the, uh, you know, what the, the neck guard, <laughs> the way I wrote it, can you tell me what the neck guard thing is, the neck guard thing that Line A wears under his jersey? So uh, Tim wrote back to me, and he said, it is a neck guard that he has been wearing for a long, long time, and the Winnipeg equipment guy told me not to ever lose it because he could never find the exact one. He tried a few, and they were not the same. So uh, Tim says that the equipment manager in Winnipeg said, Guard it really good. <laughs> so it's just a neck guard. And it's more than likely something that he just feels comfortable with and has always felt comfortable with. And that's why he wears it. And uh, that's that's a player's prerogative, obviously. So that's the answer to your question, Levi. It's a neck guard. And it's one he's had for a long time and he's comfortable with it. And when it finally rots away and falls apart, he'll either – go to another one, even though it, he doesn't like it as much or he just won't wear one anymore because he can't find the one that he likes. That's the way it goes. So one more thing before uh, I end this today, I've seen some reports here about uh, last year's first round pick, Igor Chinnikov or Chinnikov. Again, when he gets here someday, I'll find out exactly how he wants it said. But anyway, there, there are reports that he could sign an entry-level contract and becoming, you know, you've got uh, Marchenko and Voronkov over there, two Russians that have been drafted previously by the Blue Jackets. They're having success in the KHL. And the question has been, when are they coming over? And it's still another year, two years. I don't know. I, it, that, I don't know. I don't, that stuff drives me nuts. I don't like it. Uh, again, I've told you this before. If it was me, I'd want to draft the guy, have him under my control and not be, expecting somebody else to develop them for me but that's not the way this sport works so you have to deal with what it is so they're in the khl and maybe they don't come over for another year so when when it's come to this kid this first round pick everybody's told me the same thing well it'll be another year two years and i said i said this weeks ago months ago if i'm that guy and if I got drafted and nobody knew who I was, remember when he got drafted? Remember how the whole draft show came to a stop in the U.S. and Canada? Who's this guy? We don't even know who he is. We don't have him on any of our projections. If I'm that guy, nobody knows who I am, and I just got picked in the first round, I'm coming. When I can come over, I'm coming. I'm not going to wait around here. You know what happens in Russia. They don't want to let you leave. They want to hang on to you. They want to keep you. There's, you know, it's professional, political, all that. I'd just go. I've said, why wouldn't you come over here if you're him? It's different than those other guys. They're locked in. This guy played like the, the minor league version of the KHL last year. He gets into the KHL this year. He's been okay. Do I think he's going to come over here? And if they put him in the lineup tomorrow, he would be that big of a difference maker that it's going to start to turn things around. No, not at all. He's 20 years old. No, I don't think that, but he's a first round pick and get out of there. Why you can get out of there, come over and play. You think you're really good. Prove it. Come prove it. Come over here and prove it. I hope you're right. It just cracks me up because <laughs> And, and maybe he doesn't come at the end of the day. But I, I've i had this argument with people for weeks on end. Oh, no, he's not going to come. Nah, why would he come? Why, why wouldn't he come? Why not? Your first round pick. They shocked the world. Nobody knew who you were. 
Come let people know who you are. I hope he is good enough that when he does come, whether it be now, whether it be next year, whether it be two years, whatever, I hope he's good enough that people are going to now know who he is once he gets here. And they're going to say, man, what a smart pick that was. That was, that might've been out of the box. Nobody knew who he was that night, but everybody knows who he is now. That's what I hope it turns out to be whenever that is. But if he does come, this is why I bring this whole thing up. If he comes now, I told you so. I told you. That's what it's all about, right? Me saying I told you so. That's that's why I'm here. No. Uh, thanks for your questions. Appreciate it as always. It's weird wearing long sleeves. I haven't worn long sleeves in a week. I know I keep rubbing it in, but I'm back here now, and we're gonna ride this whole thing out together. And uh, we're going to do this again next week. And it'll be one step closer to, you know, that next phase that we get to. But thanks for your questions. As always, again, you find me on Twitter and Instagram at Bobby Mac Sports. My email, Bobby Mac at bluejackets.com, B O B B Y M A C at bluejackets.com. Blue Jackets are home tomorrow night. They're in for one game. And then they got to go to Carolina for one game. And then they got to come back for four games. But they're at home. Military appreciation to, uh, night. Let me try it again because I tripped just just slightly. I tripped on that. And I don't want to trip at all because this is really, really important um, because it is military appreciation night. And we should all appreciate our military and those who serve or those who have served and, uh, you know, the things that they do to make sure the rest of us can stay safe and free. But Military Appreciation Night is being presented by Elk and Elk. That's tomorrow night, 7 o'clock at Nationwide Arena. The Blue Jackets and the Detroit Red Wings going head-to-head. And, again, they still have uh, three meetings uh, with each other before it's all said and done. So can the Blue Jackets uh, win a game? I was asked that question earlier. Can they? Yes. Will they? I don't know. Should they? Nah, probably not. But <laughs> but we all want to see we all want to see them do well as as best they can. We want to see that trying turn into results. That's what we're all hoping for. So tomorrow night, seven o'clock, pregame coverage starts at six thirty tomorrow on the Blue Jackets Radio Network and on Bally Sports Ohio. And tomorrow, I will also have my pregame interview with John Tortorella for you to look forward to. So that's what is on the docket. That's what is coming up next for the Blue Jackets. So once again, thanks for all of your questions and your comments and your voice questions and everything you sent to me today. As always, it is appreciated. Until next time, I'm Bob McElligot saying so long. 